Technoculture. Welcome to a new episode of Technoculture. I am Federica Bressan, and today my guest is Federico Faggin, an Italian physicist, multi award winning inventor, innovator, and successful entrepreneur. Welcome to Technoculture, Federico. Thank you. And thank you for letting me call you Federico and for having me here at your house today in the Palo Alto area, where you have been living and working for the past decades, achieving all the important results that um, we all know in your career, but you're still working on something new. You're not done with being an innovator, and in this case, by trying to bring into the sciences the fundamental concept that consciousness is an intrinsic property of nature, and that physics is incomplete if we don't consider this with all the implications on artificial intelligence and all the rest. So would you like to summarize, if you will, what's important in this message that you're trying to express specifically to the scientific community and that is hard to get through? Yes, the essence of the message is that reality has two fundamental aspects. A inner aspect, which is similar to the inner reality that we have within ourselves, which is private, un not shareable directly. You cannot see my inner reality, I cannot see yours. But I can communicate to you using symbols and you may be able to understand. The inner reality is semantic, the outer reality is symbolic, syntactical. So to me this is a foundational aspect of all reality. So the quantum fields of quantum physics, for example, in my model, are conscious. They have an inner reality and they have an outer reality. Physics only studies the outer reality, as if it was all that existed. And so, in my model, that is not, not, that's not enough. There is also the inner reality, and the inner reality is made of consciousness, of identity, and agency. In other words, the quantum fields that view from the physics side are only symbolic, they're only information, quantum information. In my model, a quantum field is a self. It's a self that has consciousness. In other words, it has an inner experience where it perceives itself and the world and can comprehend itself and the world, get the meaning of itself and the world. It has free will and the capacity to act in the world. Well, the actions in the world are actually communications. And the symbols of that communications are what we imagine the particles to be, which are actually states of the fields. So in this model, reality is made of selves that communicate with each other and through that communication create hierarchies of selves and hierarchies of symbols, like the particles, the atoms, the molecules, the macromolecules, the cells, human beings, and so on. So in this model, then, inner and outer are two aspects, irreducible aspect of a entity, conscious entity, that cannot be broken down. And that changes completely the reality, the way we understand reality. So consciousness is a foundational aspect of reality, but the essence of reality is not matter anymore, but are the selves. Selves that communicate and through communication create physical universes, which is the outer aspect of a constructed reality by a collection of selves. And each self has an inner world, which is private, made of meaning. There is something important to observe precisely. You quote quantum physics. You're not falsifying any previous theory. You say like quantum physics expanded, contains yes. Newtonian physics. So your model may contain quantum physics. That's correct. Would you imagine that this is the final layer or 
of course we can't know, but if consciousness is the fundamental and intrinsic property of, of the universe, so what the universe is made of, an energy that wants to know itself, mm -hmm. right? Um, yes. Then that's the limit, if we could understand that. Yeah, that, in some ways that would be the limit, but it is, it is an ever-evolving limit. In other words, the this, this self-knowing of the selves is never-ending because, because you, know, you have to assume that the selves are potentially infinite entities that will never finish knowing themselves. So whatever they know is, becomes finite, but there is more to know about themselves. And so, so, you know, so there is a continuing evolution of the selves into organizations of selves, organization of organization of selves, and so on. And we are an example of an organization of an organization of organization of selves because we are made of atoms and molecules and cells and, you know, and uh, entities which are much higher than the, you know, than the organs of our body. Now I know why you chose this quote, which I have here, which I took from the website of your foundation. Everything is an enigma, and the key to an enigma is another enigma by Ralph Waldo Emerson. So I just mentioned your foundation. I took this quote from uh, the website of the Federico and Elvia Fagin Foundation, which you started in 2011, that's yes. correct, to support the scientific study, theoretical and experimental study of consciousness in U.S. universities and nonprofit organizations. Yes. So this has been going on since 2011. It's 2020 now. Can you give us some example of some concrete result obtained uh, with the foundation? Yes, well, the foundation has uh, uh, supported the research uh, of Dean Radding, for example, at IONS, who has studied the influence of intentions on photons going through a double slit, finding that there is, in fact, the, the capacity to affect the physical behavior of these electrons, even at distances of many thousands of miles. And uh, it's a small effect, but four or five sigma, which is not insignificant, but there is no model to explain how this can, might happen. More recently, I, I'm working on a model of consciousness, and uh, uh, I'm funding the uh, group of UC Irvine of Don Hoffman, and there have been several papers uh, published so far. I've also created a chair in the physics of information at UC Santa Cruz to study information in living systems, you know, in systems out of equilibrium, because I believe that uh, that type of information is not the Shannon information that we use in computers. And so it's important to really study that. I also have supported and supporting uh, groups in uh, Chapman University and the, in the quantum group that exists at Chapman and also a brain institute that Chapman has just started and um, several individuals as well. So, you know, the, the, the work is progressing and of course I'm myself developing a model that uh, starts with these ideas that expressed earlier and trying to create a conceptual structure they can guide to find out what, how, how far have we, do we need to go in physics. In other words, can quantum physics, the way we know it, quantum field theory, explain consciousness if we add a few things? Or do we need a physics which is even beyond quantum physics? That we don't know yet. But ideally, the physics that we know reinterpreted and with adding consciousness of the fields, so the quantum fields, may be sufficient to explain. So we'll find out. Science is something very specific. It needs to want to prove and verify and observe. So how can you be sure that science can investigate these types of things where you have mentioned inner experiences or almost receiving some knowledge instead of you know an active wanting to understand and manipulate which science does it's it's the right tool to do that 
So how can you be sure that science can investigate this field? Well, uh, obviously, uh, I can only appeal to people that have a similar thinking like I do. Uh, and uh, I hope to appeal to sufficient number of young people that are still open to the reality of inner reality and not just outer reality that physics today doesn't doesn't consider existing you know for for physics today uh, only the outer reality exists consciousness is simply produced by the brain and is an emergent property of a complex informational system which doesn't explain anything but you know it provides a pacifier to anybody that asks questions and uh, you can keep on doing whatever you did before and of course, I had accepted that 30 years ago, actually 33 years ago, when I started studying consciousness, I had accepted that. And I asked myself, can I build a computer that is conscious? And uh, as I started thinking about the problem, it was very clear pretty soon that it was impossible. Nobody can explain how we as a mechanical system can have consciousness. It is impossible to explain. No physicist can explain, no scientist can explain the fact that we have an inner reality because matter is only outer reality. So interiority, how can interiority emerge from matter that is only exteriority is, is impossible. There are two, two different qualities. And so in the past, uh, the, the word consciousness was cleverly and uh, carefully avoided in scientific circles because nobody could explain it so we might as well pretend that it doesn't exist but it exists and in fact it is what gives meaning to our life how can we neglect what gives meaning to our life and then today people talk about creating computers that will be conscious perhaps in 20 or 30 years and people don't even know what consciousness is how can they say that and then people get confused and today we are told that we are machines. And so all of that creates enormous confusion and enormous damage to people because we are actually not machines. We're not even close to, what a, to computers. We are compared, the brain is compared to a computer. We are not even close. We are quantum systems. We are quantum systems. We have a nucleus, a core of quantumness that connects us to a reality which is the quantum reality in which things can be in superposition, things can be connected non-locally. Our thought, a thought that we can make before it's translated into words, into mental words, that thought has superposition of potentially contradictory things. But we can perceive that in our mind. When we translate it into symbols, we can only tell one, one thing at a time, and therefore no longer in superposition. Things are no longer in superposition. But our mind already has this property. We perceive a reality which has quantumness in it already. And we know that. It cannot be explained. A computer is pure Boolean logic, and not the quantum logic that exists in the quantum reality. So, here we have a fundamental difference and science needs to attack this problem before it's too late. Because today everybody thinks, everybody, every scientist typically thinks that consciousness is a property of matter. And that is not the case. In my opinion, after studying it for 30 years and many of the students of consciousness that have studied consciousness for tens of years are arriving at the same conclusion that it is impossible to explain consciousness with the paradigm, scientific paradigm that we have today. It's a little bit like wanting to find a soul in the body by taking the parts yeah. apart or weighing the body after death and saying, oh, the soul left. There's something that you said that when I heard it, scared me very much and that is about one of the first spiritual experiences you said a certain truth revealed itself to me and i just knew 
Like I knew, I understood mm -hmm. in that moment. Yeah. That scared me when you said it, because for how much I relate to that experience, yeah. as an academic myself, that type of, I'm sure of this, yeah. it is, but I don't have immediate proof here, yeah. it scares me. Are you sure that you exist? I think. <laughs> I, Are you sure of existing? As far as you know, I can tell, yes. Okay. Well, that is the certainty of that experience. That experience brought together the four, actually revealed for the first time, but also brought them together the four fundamental levels of inner reality that we have. The physical sensations, the emotional feelings, the mental aspect of reality, the mental feelings, because before the thoughts become words, they are feelings, they are images, and the spiritual dimension, which I didn't even know existed. Now, all four layers of being were resonating. You know, my body was vibrating, you know, almost like the cells were, you know, participating to this epiphany. Reality had the feeling of being love, of a power so potent that the biggest life, love I ever felt before in my life pale in comparison. The mind clearly understood that this substance of which everything is made that feels this, you know, feels like love, a, a unbelievable love, is what is all that exists. And I was the observer of the world, and the world was me. So I was the world observing itself, which the sense of unity that never felt in my life before. And the joy of that sense of unity was immense. So how can you not know that this is, you know, you, you caught the essence. I caught the essence of what reality is. Now, you know, can I prove it? No. Do I need to prove it? No. I know within myself that that's the way it is. Too bad if you don't believe it. You know, I'm not trying to make a religion out of it. I'm telling you what I felt. And that sense of truth was exactly the same as the sense of truth that I had within myself that I know that I exist. So if a scientist says, prove it that you exist, ask him back, prove that you exist. Well, you know, I mean, this idea of proof, when we have absolutely the inability to feel deeply reality, you know, it's not the same as, 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 a, as a mathematical theorem. What, what, what kind of axioms are you going to start with to prove anything when you have something like this? You cannot. So, so, you know, so, you know obviously, if, if, I, if I make a statement which is based on mathematical axioms, I have to prove them. Yeah? And I know how to do that. I used to know more than now how to do that. But in any event, that is what science is about. But the intellectual knowledge is not absolutely not the same as the lived experience through conscious experience of all the levels of our being. And that is what physicists, that what scientists need to begin to be open to experience themselves. That is the point. The point is that if you live only in your head, which is exactly what happens when you, you, know, you, you shove away your emotions because those are bad. Those are bad for you, you know, you, you're, you know, you, you can, can go out of control, you know, and so on and so forth. And only certain thoughts are permitted and only goes. And if you get into that, that mode, you end up in your head and you live in your head and your life will be typically miserable. Now, I would like to challenge you again, though, because I agree with you 100% of that. It's just that good luck with integrating that not just to convince others but also to integrate that within one's own academic upbringing you say well i have to prove because someone else might come up and say i strongly feel x y and z well you know i don't need to you see what those what those experiences have done to me because it wasn't just one it was several is to give me the beginning of a framework that will allow to hopefully to have a model of reality 
the then can be mathematized, but you cannot mathematize my experience. Experience is not mathematizable. It's only the symbolic aspect of reality that can be put into maths. The symbolic, yes. And you can make predictions based on a model that has the capacity to, to model that part that is modelable with mathematics. And then those can be proven or disproven. But the inner reality of self, how can you, uh, you know, that is beyond mathematics. But if, you, if we start with the hypothesis that only math can explain reality, what are we going to do? The point is that the moment that we face our inner reality, we had to change completely the way we think. And we had to understand that the origin of the universe and the evolution of the universe and the purpose of the universe have to start from the beginning because if consciousness is primary, he has to have an impact from the beginning. Otherwise, if it happens only later, well then, you know, consciousness is really either epiphenomenal or a evolutionary, you know, accident of certain brains that develop that particular capacity. But I don't believe that based on all that I have experienced and all that I have thought about. So I'm developing a model that hopefully will provide testable hypotheses, and then we'll find out. That's my shtick. <laughs> Did I understand correctly also that you are not trying to investigate what consciousness is per se, or is there life after death? You're interested in how consciousness interacts with matter. So the influence that it has on matter by the way, I liked you said it's easier to explain how the outer world emerges from the inner world than vice versa. Yes. So there is a permeation precisely because all these fields are not separate, mm -hmm. are always they are all, they are in superposition. Yeah. So is it this that you want to model mathematically the in, the interaction, the back and forth? Of, yeah. But you can only model the symbolic aspect of reality, which is the interaction. There is the communication between these fields. That, that's all that you can model. You cannot model the inner, the inner experience. That's private and that's, that's, you know, that, that cannot be modeled. And since you've been studying this, thinking about this for many, many years now, although only more recently have you devoted more resources and have been going public uh, yeah. with it. You've been studying this for many, many years and you followed courses, you traveled, you read, you talked to people. How much of the material that you found existing in uh, Oriental religions, in mysticism, do you find sort of ready to be taken and uh, translated into the language of mathematics, for example? No, I don't find it at all ready to be plucked. <laughs> but it, it relates to what you're Sure, it relates, about. yeah. But there, there, are, there are, you know, uh, basically what is needed is a comprehension, is connecting the dots. There are many dots out there. You know, many people have said this, that, that, that. But nobody has put together the package that connects certain realities that are talked in spirituality, you know, uh, since the Vedas, you know, the, the four or five thousand years ago. Uh, the spiritual traditions to science, to physics, to quantum field theory. You know, uh, the typically the physicist doesn't know and doesn't care about spirituality, and the spiritual people don't care about physics. And, and so, typically, you know, there, there are few that, that try to connect the two, but few and far between. So, so there is an incredible amount of work necessary to create a conceptual structure that is coherent, that makes sense, that has a capacity to exp explanatory capacity that today doesn't exist. And that's what I'm doing. I would like to touch on artificial intelligence mm -hmm. uh, before I let you go. It's a little bit of a different issue than investigated human consciousness and all of that. But it's also very interesting because you bring a lot of concepts from there and are critical of how currently artificial intelligence is done. And you can tell us why, but I would like to start by asking you, don't you think that maybe the word intelligence in artificial intelligence was a misnomer to begin with? Yeah, 
I mean, the intelligence of a computer is simply the mechanical aspect of our intelligence. But our intelligence is not that mechanical. We don't even have a univocal definition of intelligence. So when we argue about artificial intelligence, I'm always like, what do we mean by... No, of course. But, but you know, but, uh, but people understand what mechanical is, right? I mean, if you, you know, uh, if you do op- mathema- mathematical operations are mechanical, uh, an application of mechanical intelligence. And computers are much better than we are at doing mechanical things. But we are incredibly, in fact, you know, is incommensurable the capacity that we have to have intuitions, insights, inventions, imagination. Those are the qualities that, that, that are human and are the qualities of consciousness that a computer doesn't have and will never have because a computer is simply a simple manipulator, no matter how you look at it. So what I am critical about AI is the fact that people tell you that computers in 20 or 30 years will be conscious. That's, that's what I'm critical. Mm-hmm. AI is very, it's excellent to do the things that AI can do, but let's not make AI, you know, give the idea that AI can do things that AI cannot do. AI cannot be empathic. People that are building empathic robots today, they're telling you they can take care of all people. I mean, that's silly. I mean, consciousness is the seat of our emotions, and emotions are not measurable. They are not things that you can measure. In fact, uh, you know, if you, if, you know, love and hate and, you know, and, and uh, pleasure and joy and whatever, they, 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 are, they are all coexisting. They, they, they are facets of some ever-changing, you know, ensemble of situations. You know, we're not talking about reductive reality. The reality of consciousness is holistic. And the world of computers is reductionist. That's fundamentally different. We are quantum. Essentially, the, the core is quantum. And a computer is classical. So it's a machine that uses pieces that can be taken apart and put back together. A living system, you cannot do that. You cannot take atoms and molecules and put them back together and you have a living system again. We are completely different organizations, completely different systems. And that's where the problem is. I mean, there are two fundamental misconceptions today. That the simulation of reality is reality, which is not even close, and that a living system is like a computer, is a classical machine. No, a living system, a living organism is a quantum system, essential in, in its essence, and a simulation of reality is not reality. A picture that I see is not the same as living an experience with that person. Have you talked to VR people recently with the advancement of the resolution of the world and all of that? It's so much like reality that it's going to be indistinguishable for practical purposes. When you're in it, it may not be the same, but when you're in it, it feels exactly the same. I'm not advocating for that. I'm just saying, uh, have you talked to these VR people that counter argue and say, well, if you can't tell the difference, oh. it's the same thing to you? But I think that this physical reality is actually a virtual reality. But it's not a virtual reality the way we, yes, we are sure. told that it is. Okay? In other words, we are the ones that live that virtual reality. We, our experience is not the same as the, the, the pixels in the, in the screen. That's the problem. People think that the experience of something is the pixel in the screens. No. And that is, people don't understand what consciousness is. That is the problem. Today, most people don't even understand, particularly people in AI, don't even understand what consciousness is. Because they live in their head, typically. They, 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 they have no idea, that, that, you know, emotions, everything else, out of the window, don't, you don't care, okay? Or they are bad things, they, are, they make you suffer, whatever, you know? But it's not a human being that way is basically just a brain you know, a brain that only thinks about something that, that, that is a problem to solve as opposed to 
intuiting, you know, thinking about the nature of reality, the nature of things, and so on. No, it's, it's, it's all about solving problems. So, so they become themselves mechanical people as opposed to being fully human beings. A human being loves all kinds of other things, art, movement, you know, whatever, you know, but not just being limited to a world which is mechanical. And so we got a problem there. Well, it's been a great pleasure to meet your symbol. I also heard you say our bodies are symbols. Absolutely. Like, you know, and so it's been a pleasure to meet your symbol, to exchange <laughs> symbols uh, with you. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you, Federica.